like 5000 likes to this video, we will implode more patriotic news. Thank you. Richard Nixon, Bill Clinton, and Barack Obama Diane go to heaven. Regan Pfeiffer reports that in a recent interview with The Times, Barack Obama's former Deputy Chief of Staff Alyssa Mastromenico shared how Obama gave her dating advice. According to the Daily Mail, the former White House Deputy Chief of Staff for Barack Obama claimed that the president once gave her dating advice in 2006 when they were on a return trip to Chicago from Iowa. In an interview with The Times, Alyssa Mastromenico shared how the at the time Illinois senator once threatened to text one of Senator Tom Harkin's staffers on her behalf when he saw him checking her out. Obama turned to me and said, Look, he was really into you. And if you don't email him, I will, she writes in her book about her time working with Obama called Who Thought This Was a Good Idea? But what is even more interesting than Obama attempting to make love connections for his staff is the obvious lack of love Michelle had for her own. According to the same deputy chief of staff Master Minico who remembered Obama so fondly, she states this about Michelle, but the true person in charge of the White House was First Lady Michelle Obama. She's the boss, Most Minico said. If he was mad at you for any reason, you'd be, like, okay. If she was mad at you. If you thought for some reason she might be, you were, like, I'm in so much trouble. That isn't exactly a surprise. After all, if you're Michelle Obama and think you're entitled to 24 servants, you must be running the Facebook shuts down iRobots after they begin speaking their own language. Social media Goliath Facebook shut down an experiment with artificial intelligence, after two i programs created and began to speak a language only they knew, The Independent reported Tuesday. Facebook developers were attempting to get the two chatbots to barter a trade with one another utilizing hats, balls, and books of varying values, according to The Independent. The two bots quickly resorted to speaking a variation of English between one another that seemed largely incomprehensible to the developers but was seemingly understood clearly by the two bots. The robots were reportedly told to improve their negotiation tactics as they bartered a trade but were not required to use understandable English, and soon the bots began speaking abnormally. According to The Independent, a sample of the conversation went like this, Bob, I can I I everything else. Alice, balls have zero to me 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 to Bob, you I everything else. Alice, balls have a ball to me to me to me to me to me to me to me, Bob, I I can I I everything else. Alice, balls have a ball to me to me to me to me to me to me to me, Bob, I. Alice, balls have zero to me 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 to Bob, you I I I I I everything else. Alice. Balls have zero to me 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 to Bob, you I I everything else. Alice, balls have zero to me 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 to according to the independent, while the conversation initially looked like stuttering or glitching, the bots appeared to be using specific speech rules. For instance, both bots kept stressing their own names, which was thought to be a part of the bartering process. Developers reported that some of the negotiations carried out with this bizarre language were concluded successfully. They noted that the language was possibly just a shorthand form of English used by the programs to work more efficiently. Linguist Mark Lieberman, who called the chatbot's language Facebooklish, said that while Facebooklish seems like gibberish, it counts as a successful language if it's understood. He explained on his blog what it means for something to truly count as a language. We have to start by admitting that it's not up to linguists to decide how the word language can be used, though linguists certainly have opinions and arguments about the nature of human languages, and the boundaries of that natural class. Our vernacular language is really capital L languages, rather than just imperfect approximations to elite languages? All linguists would agree that they are. Are sign languages really languages rather than just ways to use mime to communicate? Again. Everyone agrees that they are. While researchers were fascinated by the development and not worried about the language being a way for the bots to keep secrets from developers, Facebook had to shut down the programs due to the fact that they were being designed to speak to humans, 
not encoding language to each other. But while the eyes language was very strange, inventing varied forms of wording isn't as odd as some might think. In fact, according to Facebook Artificial Intelligence Research Division's visiting researcher Dhruv Batra, it's very human. Agents will drift off understandable language and invent code words for themselves, Batra said, highlighting the effectiveness of the adapted communication. Like if I say the five times, you interpret that to mean I want five copies of this item. This isn't so different from the way communities of humans create shorthands. According to Liverman, however, it's unlikely that the I form of shorthand is something humans will adopt. In the first place, it's entirely text-based, while human languages are all basically spoken, or gestured, with text being an artificial overlay, Liverman wrote on his blog. And beyond that, it's unclear that this process yields a system with a kind of word, phrase, and sentence structures characteristic of human languages. IRS officials claim their lives are in danger if they testify about targeting of the Tea Party. On Obama's watch, people who work for the IRS targeted innocent tax-paying citizens for unfair scrutiny because they didn't like the politics of the Tea Party. This was a scandal of the highest order and the media largely ignored it. Now these people are playing the victim. Truth Revolt reports, IRS officials say their lives are in danger if they testify about Tea Party bias, during a hotly contested presidential election. The IRS decided to delay the tax-exempt applications for various Tea Party and conservative organizations. Now that it's time for the guilty to deal with their unconstitutional behavior, the big bad government bullies are shaking in their boots. At least, that's what they want you to believe. The Free Beacon has a story, current and former IRS officials are asking not to publicly testify about the agency's alleged bias against Tea Party and other conservative organizations claiming they are in danger if they do so. Former official Lois Lerner and Holly Paz both argued in recent filings under seal in the U.S. District Court in Cincinnati that the death threats and other harassment they have faced take precedence over the public's right to hear their testimony on the case of IRS bias against conservative groups. Does this even pass the straight face test? Mark Meckler, the co-founder of Tea Party Patriots, criticized their cowardice. Tea Partiers were subjected to scorn, ridicule, abuse and threats precisely because of what people like Lois Lerner did to us. These corrupt IRS officials should not be allowed to hide behind their fear. They should be prosecuted for what they did to innocent Americans. Breaking former Dodge official under Eric Holder joins Mueller investigation. Via Reuters New York, Reuters a former U.S. Justice Department official has become the latest lawyer to join special counsel Robert Mueller's team investigating Russia's interference in the 2016 presidential election, a spokesman for the team confirmed. Greg Andres started on Tuesday, becoming the 16th lawyer on the team, said Josh Stuve, a spokesman for the special counsel. Most recently a white-collar criminal defense lawyer with New York law firm Davis Polk and Wardwell, Andres, 50, served at the Justice Department from 2010 to 2012. He was Deputy Assistant Attorney General in the Criminal Division, where he oversaw the fraud unit and managed the program that targeted illegal foreign bribery. Mueller, who was appointed special counsel in May, is looking into possible collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia during the election, among other matters. Congressional committees are also investigating the matter. As TGP previously reported, Robert Mueller stacked his special counsel team with Democrat donors and Obama lawyers. Mueller previously announced Jeannie Rhee would be an attorney on his team. Jeannie Rhee served for two years under Eric Holder. Jeannie Rhee is a Clinton Foundation lawyer and former Deputy Assistant Attorney General under Barack Obama. There is no evidence of collusion and even if collusion occurred it would not be a crime, just like the fact that Hillary Clinton colluded with Ukraine was not a crime. But the Russian witch hunt will never end until heads roll. Here is a look at the 15 other attorneys who will investigate Trump. Rush Atkinson, an attorney on detail from the Criminal Division's Fraud Section at the Department of Justice, donated $200 to Clinton in 2016. Peter Carr, 
Dodge spokesman under Barack Obama. Andrew Goldstein, a public corruption prosecutor on detail from the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of New York, worked under Trump basher Preet Bharara in the liberal New York Southern District. Adam Jed, an appellate attorney on detail from Dodge's Civil Division, defended Obamacare at the Dodge. Robert Mueller, special counsel team leader. Best friend to fired leaker James Comey. Lisa Page, an attorney on detail from the FBI's Office of the General Counsel and a former trial attorney with the Criminal Division's Organized Crime and Gang Section, investigated Ukrainian oligarch Dmitry Firtash, a one-time business partner of former Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort, at the Dodge. Elizabeth Prelogger an appellate attorney on detail from the Office of the Solicitor General. Fluent in Russian, former law clerk to Justices Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Elena Kagan. James Quarles, a former partner at Wilmer Hale and a former assistant special prosecutor for the Watergate Special Prosecution Force. Former assistant special prosecutor on the Watergate Special Prosecution Force. Jeannie Rhee a former partner at Wilmer Hale who has served in the Office of Legal Counsel at Dodge and as an assistant U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia. Rhea is a Clinton Foundation lawyer and former Deputy Assistant Attorney General in the Office of Legal Counsel under Barack Obama. Brandon Van Grack, an attorney on detail from the Justice Department's National Security Division led a grand jury inquiry in Northern Virginia scrutinizing former Trump associate Michael Flynn's foreign lobbying. Andrew Weissman, who is on detail from the Criminal Division's Fraud Section and who has served as General Counsel at the FBI and as an Assistant U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of New York. Weissman donated $2,300 to the Obama Victory Fund in 2008, $2,000 to the DNC in 2006 and at least $2,300 to the Clinton campaign in 2007. Aaron Zebley a former partner at Wilmer Hale who has previously served with Mueller at the FBI and has served as an assistant U.S. attorney in the Eastern District of Virginia. Worked with Robert Mueller at the Wilmer Hale firm. These other Mueller attorneys have less conspicuous political leanings, Aaron Zielinski, an attorney on detail from the U.S. Attorney's Office in the District of Maryland. Worked under Assistant A.G. Rod Rosenstein in Maryland. Zainab Ahmad a top national security prosecutor on detail from U.S. Attorney's Office in the Eastern District of New York. Michael Dreben, an appellate attorney on detail from the Office of the Solicitor General, described by former colleagues as one of the brightest criminal law experts of the past two generations.